Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. A long time ago, probably at least 10 years ago, I got my first HDR application. It was something called Photomatics. And I really didn't use Photomatics too often because when you sent a bracketed set of images into Photomatics, it tended to return to you an image that had a very strong HDR look. And I really didn't like that HDR look. A little while later, I learned that you could send a single image into Photomatix. And when you did that, it tended to return an image that just had more dynamic range. It didn't often have that very strong HDR look. So I often used Photomatix on a single image. Well, with Luminar Neo in the HDR Merge extension, you could send a single image into it as well. And that's what we're going to be doing today. I want to show you how you could take like a very average image such as this. This is really nothing more than a snapshot. There has been no processing done to this at all. This is a raw file straight out of camera. And with it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send it to the HDR Merge extension. You can see it's over here on the right-hand side of the catalog module. We're just going to take it and drag it right in there. You don't even have to worry about hitting the little gear to set any settings. Most of them will be grayed out anyway, so you don't have to do that. Just drag it in there and click on Merge. Now, on my computer, of course, it's going to vary depending on the speed of your computer. It tends to take maybe 10 to 20 seconds. It really does vary for some reason depending on the image. Now, here is our image that we got back from HDR Merge, and I think you'll agree that it looks pretty good. It looks almost like a postcard. This is kind of like a new starting point. This is still an unprocessed file as far as everything else in Luminar Neo. I mean, we did do HDR merge to it, but from this point on, you could go to the edit panel and start doing some editing here. Put a vignette on it, uh, remove spots, whatever you need to do, you could do. Uh, so it's not like you're, you're done, but you could be done. I mean, this looks pretty good. Let's do a few more because results may vary, and I want to show you some different types of images and what could happen. For example, let's do this one, this waterfall. Again, it's an unprocessed RAW file. The previous image, this image, this is the unprocessed file now. This was shot with a Nikon Z7 II, and this one over here that we're going to do now was shot with a Nikon D850. So we're going to take that, we're going to drag that into the HDR Merge dialog, and we'll click on Merge and let it do its thing. While it's doing that, I want to mention very quickly, I'd like you to sign up for my weekly newsletter. For a little over four years, I've been putting out a newsletter. It goes out every Monday, and it's free. And I'd be really honored if you would sign up for it. In the description below this video will be a link to this web page. From here, you could sign up. Now, I did add some pay tiers to it recently. To see the pay tiers uh, to it, all you need to do is sign up for the free newsletter by putting your email address here, clicking subscribe. Once you do that, you'll be brought to this page. And you can see with the free tier, you'll get the weekly newsletter. It goes out every Monday. If you choose to support what I'm doing, teaching photography online, uh, and make a donation, I really appreciate it. $7 a month, you'll get that free newsletter every Monday, plus you'll get an additional newsletter that goes out on Thursday. There's also a community where you could post comments and, and comment on other people's comments. And also, every now and then, I'm going to be doing a podcast, and you'll have ac access to the podcast. And you'll have uh, access to the full archive of all the old posts I've done. Um, you know, I write in these newsletters about photography, so all the posts are about photography. So at $7 a month or $70 a year, there is a founding member level, $200 a year. And with that, you get everything else. Plus, I'll give you a 20 to 30 minute portfolio overview if you choose that option. So that's it. I'd really appreciate it if you would sign up. All right, here is our resultant image. Let it render. And you can see now this one probably needs a little bit of editing. It looks a little dark. So we would go to the edit panel here. And then we'd probably go to develop. And I'd probably go right down to shadows and open up those shadows a little more. Maybe come in here. Um, maybe I'd go to the blacks and whites. And I'd like bring that up, bring this up. See how you can do, do editing from this point forward. It kind of gets you in a better place and maybe get you in that place a little faster than you would have if you were just editing the raw file right from the beginning. So let's go to another one. 
we'll go back to this folder. Let's do this one. Another one, just a very ad average kind of snapshot, a little bit underexposed because I exposed for the sky. Let's see how it does on an image like this. This was shot with a Nikon, or I'm sorry, this was shot with a Sony A7R4. So let's see what happens here. Again, it's going to take 10 to 20 seconds. And when it does, it's going to automatically put it in this folder called working folder, or I'm sorry, in this folder called the HDR merge folder. And it's going to put you in that folder. All right. <laughs> so let that render. And there's our image. Now it looks way better. I mean, way better. And from here, you could do some editing from this point forward if you think you need to. And again, let's go back to my working folder and let's go to our last image. Last image is that same beach. This time I was there at sunset. And you can see this one is drastically underexposed, obviously because it's a sunset. I didn't want to blow out the sky too much. Obviously, it's blown out where the sun is. But we'll put it in the HDR merge. We'll click on merge. Let it do its thing. And then again, as I stumbled over before, when it's done here, it's going to automatically put us in this HDR merge folder that it creates. So the first time you do this, it's going to create that folder. Now this one, I, I did this before. This one to me looks a little HDR-y. This is the look I don't like. And I purposely chose this image to show you that it's not going to work all the time. I know a lot of time, especially when I first started doing these photography how-to videos on YouTube, I would find myself trying to grab images that worked perfectly and they looked beautiful every single time. As I got more experienced at teaching photography and have people emailing me saying, it doesn't work on this image, it does, I've realized I really have to give you everything. I have to show you that it will work on some images and then on other images, it just might not look right. And this one is one of those images. It's just too HDRE. Now you could try, HDRE is a word I made up, by the way. You could try to go over here and try to do something with it. Um, I'm not sure exactly how you could make this look less HDRE, uh, but it, it is what it is. So you may get mixed results is what I'm trying to say. So that's it. Try it on some images. Um, at best, what I think you'll get is a perfect image. But like this one here, I think this one's pretty much perfect. And I think more often, uh, you'll get an image like this for Waterfall where I had to go in and do some editing to it to just touch it up. But it gives you a new starting point and will get you to a place sooner than you would have if you started with the RAW file without doing the HDR merge extension on it at all. That's it. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.